we're just delighted that you have joined us for the ribbon cutting and grand opening of our newest facility, Wallace State's Workforce Training Center. Long considered the crown jewel of the Alabama Community College system, Wallace State is well known for our tradition of excellence as a learning-centered college that is recognized yet again this year for the fourth time by the Aspen Institute as one of the top 150 community colleges in this nation. That's the top 10%. We're pretty proud of that. We are ranked by Southern Business and Development Magazine as one of the top three community colleges in the southeastern region for workforce development, top online community college in the nation, a military-friendly college, and there are many other accolades. It's because of Wallace State's phenomenal success and our emphasis on preparing students for the workforce that we're here today. Our theme for today is Workforce Ready because as one of Alabama's most ambitious community colleges, that is our mission, to assure that our region's workforce is ready for the high demand, high wage jobs that are so plentiful here. This workforce training center is a game changer. It's a goal that we've had for a number of years. Not only does it make training more geographically accessible to our industry partners, it also provides the essential training space flexibility needed for a wider range of customized training for business and industry. I promise you, our business and industry partners, that if your employees need to be trained, retrained, or upskilled due to Industry 4.0 or any other factor, the Wallace State Workforce Training Center is your training partner. Not only can we meet your training needs, but the Alabama Community College System as a whole is the state's premier provider of workforce development. And we have exceptional resources available to meet your training needs throughout our system. We have so many special guests with us today, and if I start mentioning names, I'm going to miss someone. So, uh, you know, we have members of the House of Representatives here, Representative Tim Wadsworth, Representative David Standridge, Senator Gudger was with us earlier and he had to leave us, Representative Standridge is here. We have members of the Alabama Community College System, uh, Hansville City Council, Coleman City Council, um, Oneonta City Council, Blount County Commission, Coleman County Commission, representatives of our uh, local superintendents, Barnett and uh, Coloff, uh, city and county industrial development boards and economic development teams. And we're just, we're proud to have you here with us. Tourism and Chamber of Commerce, you're all here and, and we thank you. I am incredibly humbled and honored to introduce the DS guests today and our speakers. First, we have our Chancellor, Jimmy Baker, with the Alabama Community College System. Representative Randall Shedd, representing House District 11, and also representing our local legislative delegation. We have Mayor Woody Jacobs with the City of Coleman. Dale Greer, with uh, uh, Director of the Coleman Economic Development Agency. Uh, Jeremy Sturdivant, he is with, uh, direct, he's the Director of Programs for Royal Tyrants and the Jimmy Hill Mission, uh, is caught in traffic, but he will be here shortly. And we also, we know about traffic, especially in Coleman County right now these days, don't we? Um, and then we have Tracy Rushing, who is Executive Director of Safety with Ari Garrison, one of our other business and industry partners. Uh, and then finally, I have Ms. Suzanne Harbin, Vice President for Advancement and Innovation at Wallace State Community College. I'm privileged to introduce our first speaker for the day, and uh, it is uh, Chancellor Jimmy Baker. Chancellor Baker has led the Alabama Community College System since 2016, and during that time, the uh, system's 24 colleges have experienced unprecedented change, growth, and success as a result of his unwavering commitment to transform the Alabama Community College system into a virtual powerhouse of workforce and economic development. From the creation of the Skills for Success program that is training thousands of Alabamians in every corner of the state and training them at no cost, to the unprecedented growth in dual enrollment, to reimagining what every college can accomplish through capital renewal, 
This has been the most transformative period during my long career in the Alabama Community College system. Chancellor Baker insists daily that every one of our colleges be the very best, and I want to thank Chancellor Baker for the significant investment in Wallace State's future and our ability to uh, establish this workforce training center and our ability to meet future workforce needs of our region. Please welcome Chancellor Baker. You know, she didn't tell you that she provides leadership for the state as a whole in the community college system. She represents us on the board of the national organization that represents all community colleges. But more than that, she represents the people of this state and the people of this community in demanding that her school be among the best. That's the most meaningful part of what Vicki does. And she's determined that this be a major success. I don't ever question that she can do that. And you shouldn't either. Folks, it's been a pleasure serving as chancellor for the state, for the community college system. And I get excited when I know what we're doing across the state. And as I told someone a little earlier, I've been a blessed soul to be able to spend the latter part of the time when most folks would have already retired doing what I'm doing. Because I know that the community college system, as we do our jobs, and as we improve with what we have to offer to our communities, we are the best vehicle to bring about significant change in the lives of so many people. And being a lifetime Alabamian, and benefit of, benefited from a lot of the resources of this state. It is a meaningful experience to be here today and know what the opportunity really can be. I know we all think about it. We think we can understand and appreciate, but we really can't appreciate it until we begin seeing those people who oftentimes are without the things in life that make their life better because they haven't had the skills. They haven't had the opportunity. And it's our job. When I say our job, I'm talking about the community college system, your local community college, and your job as good citizens of the area to help those people find a way to make their lives better and build a community even bigger and better than you've always had. You know, I used to live in North Alabama for a short period of time, way up on the river. And I always enjoyed coming to Coleman. I had good friends here. Great community. But it's only great because the people have determined to make it great. And as we move forward with the progress, prog progress of this training program and the progress of the college and other entities in this system, this area, this community, <clears throat> let's be thankful. But it's not enough just to be thankful for what we have. Be helpful. Be supportive. And be a community that makes everybody enjoy life. So as we go forward, I don't question the kind of leadership we have at our college. I know she's going to be demanding, and I say that in a positive way, demanding that we all do our best to do the best we can to help our neighbor. As we go forward, let's all kind of pledge to do that and be supportive 
of improving the lives of our neighborhood as we go forward. The community college is excited about this today. I will tell you, we're doing this all across the state. We're building centers. We're rehabbing centers. We're adding programs. We're doing the kinds of things that we need to be doing, but we are only able to do it because of the legislative support that we've been able to receive. And I want every one of you to thank our legislators, our senators, our House members, and other leadership, because without that, we would not be able to change the opportunities that exist in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Baker. It has been really an absolute pleasure to work under his leadership these last several years, and it really, it really has been a transformative period. And as he said, we couldn't do the things that we do in the Alabama Community College system and in our, our communities without the help and support of the legislature. And so I'm proud to present to you or to introduce to you Representative Randall Shedd. He has served District 11 in the state of Alabama since 2013. He has been director of the Commission on Aging, and he has a heart for that population, and it shows in all that he does. He has served as chair, multiple terms as chair of the Coleman County Commission and mayor of Fairview. He chairs the House Urban and Rural Development Committee uh, because his heart is in rural Alabama, and he serves on the Transportation Utilities and Infrastructure Committee along with many others. He and his colleagues in the House and Senate have accomplished major progress with transportation improvements and broadband infrastructure in rural Alabama. And as a matter of fact, um, Representative Shedd, we have a little hiccup here today because we didn't expect Sprout, Sprout Fiber to be here today installing, but they showed up this morning. We're, we're glad that they're here and we're going to work <laughs> around them. So um, thank you for your emphasis on broadband improvement. He's also a Wallace State alumnus, and he is proud that Wallace State is the crown jewel in his district. Please welcome Representative Randall Shedd. Well, thank you for the kind words, Dr. Karlowicz, and uh, I'm very, very proud that Wallace State Community College is in my legislative district in Hansville. Uh, but also, Wallace State is now in uh, Representative Standridge's district in Blount County, which I share a part of Blount County with, and also it's in uh, Representative Wadsworth's district in Winston County. So uh, uh, Wallace State is, is growing uh, in places it needs to grow, and we appreciate that very much because uh, Coleman County, uh, on behalf of the legislative delegation, we're, we're appreciative to our neighbors that uh, work with us so well in the legislature and appreciate that very much. Part of our delegation, uh, as a matter of fact. So uh, Senator Gudger had got called out to a Senate meeting, and. Uh, uh, so he, uh, so I'm, I'm filling in for him. He usually is, uh, represents the delegation in speaking uh, opportunities like this uh, and always does a good job. Uh, we certainly want him at this, uh, uh, Coleman County and, and our district to be uh, represented at the table that he's at today, so you'll understand that. And you all know about Senator uh, Representative Harbison's uh, family. They've had uh, sickness that uh, and certainly when that happens, that's the priority number one. So we all understand him not being here today, but uh, he's, uh, and, and now then Wallace State with this building is in his district. So uh, uh, we're, we're, we commend you for getting all the bases covered, Dr. Carlo, uh, with the legislature. So, uh, so uh, uh, we, we're very proud of that. Uh, Dr. Carlowitz, this, this uh, facility is phenomenal, and uh, I commend you for putting together a partnership. You know, things don't just happen, and the Chancellor mentioned that we, uh, as a community, want to do things to make our community great and make it better, and, and uh, certainly that's happened in our community. But economic development, uh, uh, with Mr. Greer, we appreciate what goes on in economic development. I remember a time, we all remember a time when uh, workforce development wasn't needed because the workforce was unemployed. There was a time, believe it or not, when unemployment in Coleman County was 22 percent. So uh, that's something to be thinking. That's when the community all got together and said, we've got to do something about this. And 
uh, certainly that, that has changed. And a big part of that change has been Wallace State Community College and the community college system. I believe very strongly in our, in our community college system, Chancellor Baker, in the work that you and your team all over the state uh, works very hard at doing. Um, this, as I mentioned, is a partnership. Uh, we, we thank the Coleman County Board of Education, Superintendent Barnett, Dr. Barnett, for uh, working with us, uh, working with the delegation, all that I've mentioned. Uh, we were able to, to twist the Lieutenant Governor's hand an arm and, and, and get $250,000 uh, uh, for this project. Uh, so we thank him for that and appreciate uh, uh, Dr. Barnett working with us to, to make that partnership work. So when things happen, they don't just happen. They happen because people get together as partners and work together and cooperate to get it done. So thank you for being a wonderful community that uh, we all love and appreciate very much. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Shedd, and, and we forgot to mention that in Winston County, we're there too, because we've got a modular unit that has been delivered, uh, so we're establishing a place in Arley, and it's, it's in pieces right now, but it will be assembled hopefully by January, so um, it's, it's my pleasure now to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Mayor Jacobs' career has been spent in the accounting and construction sectors. He's devoted eight years to serving on the Coleman City Council. Mayor Jacobs was elected the 31st mayor of the city of Coleman in 2016, and he is currently in his second term. Please welcome Mayor Woody Jacobs. Yes, I've had a kind of a different kind of career. I, uh, I didn't have the privilege of uh, going to Wallace State, but I did teach there some after I came back in the accounting field. I uh, spent about 20 years in accounting. It's about 20 years in, in the construction. I actually, we actually built this building. And I, I think it's great. This is such a great face for what's going to go on here. But when I became mayor, I had one thing. I said, now guys, I'm not going to be mayor for 20 years now. You know, gonna, but what I really want to talk about is what uh, Chancellor talked about, Randall talked about, what makes Coleman, I think, as good as we are for you know not being a you know huge town, and uh, we had a former councilman that's getting, going to be with the Lord now, but he, he coined the phrase and we just called it teamwork, and we always work together. Chancellor, I want to tell you that when when Vicky calls, she's got a good project. I promise you, because this when she she thinks things out well and we work it out well together, so. Um, very proud of this. It's been long coming. Our economic development team has worked with Wallace because you weren't in my district. But she's now in my district too. She's in the city of Colvin. <laughs> but let me tell you, she we helped, you know, we, we helped in various ways and, and uh, proud to do it, proud for this to be here, so thankful for it to be here. It's greatly needed in, in the in, you know with the industries that we have and workforces. One thing that Dale and them have really, really worked hard as a teamwork on this. So thank everyone. Thank you, Mayor. I, I don't think the Chancellor knows this uh, because this predates him, but uh, Mayor Jacobs would probably remember because I think you were on the City Council at that time, but probably close to 15 years ago. When you walk out the front, look to the left. If you see that property that's got that brown metal building on it, that stayed on that property. So we, we tried every way we could to get that property to start a, a, a training center here in the industrial park. That didn't happen. Then we tried to get part of the land of the property and that didn't happen. So we've been trying every way to, to make this happen. So this day has been a long time coming and we're so, so proud of it. Um, Next, I'd like to introduce to you Dale Greer. We all know and love him. Dale has served as director of the Coleman Economic Development Agency since 2017, but he's, he's worked there uh, for decades. Coleman has enjoyed tremendous success in economic development through the years, uh, the first of which being the location of Rahal, you know, the first supplier to Mercedes. Uh, and here we are on their property. 
Uh, Coleman has uh, just benefited through the leadership of uh, the economic development team and Dale was often referred to as the dam man because of his leadership of the major Duck River Dam project. Dale Greer ser serves also on the Wallace State Future Foundation among many other roles in the community. He is also a Wallace State alumnus. Please welcome Dale Greer. I bet you nobody else will be announced as the damn guy. <laughs> I, you know, I served on the State Workforce Council when it was formed and had two terms there, and I've been on the Regional Workforce Council since it was formed, 30 years plus in economic development, and I get the damn guy announcement. <laughs> you know, for years, as Vicki said, I, I've envisioned us having a workforce training center in the industrial park, but I'll tell you, I never imagined it would be at this level. I mean, this is pretty special. But today, it's a reality, and I'm really excited about it. Wallace and the flexibility of the workforce training that they have there has been a central piece of us being successful in economic development for years. You know, and this community is among the best in Alabama. I mean, we always are for new and expanding industry, and it, you need everything associated with that. Dr. Carlowick, Suzanne Harmon, and their workforce team have a remarkable record of working with industry. I think their flexibility in listening to what the companies are looking for or the business and then designing the training for them has been special. And obviously cost, location, those figure pretty high in industries locating here initially or consider an expansion here. But then what the key is, is finding the workers. It doesn't matter about location or cost or anything else if you don't have the productivity. And so I think that's where we have been very, very successful. We have a great workforce. And the good news is, you know, we're doing a remarkable job in creating jobs, You're doing a remarkable job in Alabama. I mean, it, it's precedent setting. You've never had what we have. Randall mentioned unemployment was 22%. Well, for most of this year, Coleman's unemployment has been under 2%. The state's probably 2-4. And the problem that creates for you is there's a worker shortage. And what even compounds that is, I think we have Vicki, 57, 58 percent of the working age people that are actually gainfully employed. So most of the industries are automating. There are several here in this place that are. I saw Walmart, at Ray Howe, RWC, every one of them. And what that translates into is you have fewer employees, but their skill level has to be much, much better. And so that's where I think this center will be so important. I think it's going to set a model for the way you ought to do it in the community college system. I talked to Chancellor Baker about that. I, I just think it's where we have to go the way we have to do that more. Oh, um, I think now, there are times I think companies have difficulty sending their workers out of the plant, sending them down to the college. It's a time. It takes a little more time. They're mingling them in with a lot of other things that don't really fit their purpose for being there. But I think in this center, what you're doing is bringing it to them. It's in their yard. They get to send people from a couple of miles here to, to get in on the training. And Dr. Carwick saw this building, I don't know if y'all know, Ray Al called me and said, we're looking at maybe bringing this engineering back in house. We would probably do something with this building. I think it was on a Thursday. And I said, don't you do anything with that until I talk to Dr. Carwick. I called Vicki and she said, can we see it tomorrow? And then she harassed, Jimmy said she is uh, demanding on a nice level. She's demanding. <laughs> Sometimes it's really nice, and if that works, then she's very happy with it. And if it doesn't, then you know she'll come and talk to you personally, and she has a little more. And that lady is persuasive. Maybe that's a better word than demanding, Dr. K. <laughs> the, um, you know, but then she went to Chancellor Baker and said, we're looking at this building. We'd like to lease it. We think it has great potential. We want to do it. And he bought in. And the legislative delegation bought in, Senator Gudger and Randall and, and Tim, all of y'all agreed that it made some sense and do something with it. And, and Ray Howe thought it was a good repurpose for the building. I don't think they would have allowed it to go to just anything. I think they wanted something that fit and would make them look better. And, and I think they have accomplished that. So industry will utilize this building, and I do believe it's going to be a model for where we go in the state. 
my 30 plus years of damn experience and economic development experience tell me yeah this is a game changer it's a term Vicky used and I just really think it is hundreds of people will have a better opportunity and a better quality of life because we're doing more specific training and they're flexible enough to adjust that to those right needs and I think we ought to be all happy with that it's a great day thank y'all for being here I think if any of you cross Lake Katoma right now, you understand the significance of the Dam, uh, Duck River Dam project. I've never seen a drought like we have now. I don't know if you've been on campus lately, but our pond behind the campus, half of it's gone. So, uh, you know, it takes infrastructure to make a community work. And I, I was grateful to get the call from um, Dale about the possibility of pursuing this as a training center. But I was also very grateful that the Chancellor just immediately said, yes, let's do it. And not only did he say, yes, let's do it, but we were already in our budget year. Our budget year was set. So he is also committed to helping us fund the first year of operation of this facility. So all in all, we have about a half million dollars toward the operation of this facility in the first year, and that's significant. So I'm, I'm very appreciative. Um, I'd like to introduce you now to uh, a member of my team and that is Suzanne Harbin. Suzanne is Vice President for Advancement and Innovation. She leads the Advancement Adult Education and the Business and Workforce Development Divisions at Wallace State. Through Suzanne's leadership, the numbers of persons served through Wallace State's workforce training, adult education, apprenticeships, work-based learning, and Skills for Success programs have grown exponentially. And this new Workforce Training Center is a gateway to greater access for more workforce-ready trainees. Suzanne is a phenomenal leader, and she and her team, whom she will introduce to you, they have worked tirelessly on a short timeline to bring this project to completion in preparation for this day. Suzanne will introduce our next speakers to you and share with you the importance of our industry partners and how we will be serving them all of you through this Workforce Training Center. Please welcome Suzanne. Thank you, Dr. Carlowix. Well, there's no doubt that partnerships have been the foundation to the success of Coleman and the community surrounding us. You heard it across all of the comments that have already been given today. The growth that we have experienced and we continue to experience in this last decade can be directly attributed to the powerful partnerships across education, economic development, our local, state, and national government officials, state and local nonprofits, and our essential partners, our business and industry, who choose not only to locate here, but in our community, but they also continue to expand and grow here in our community. It is with great pleasure that I introduce two of our workforce education partners, RE Garrison Trucking and the Jimmy Hill Mission. RE Garrison Trucking Incorporated was established more than 60 years ago and the company has experienced tremendous growth. Today they have more than 800 drivers and she just told me they were on track to hire 900. Uh, so that pre that's an update so I was surprised when she said that many and 250 plus non-driving employees across their company. Our partnership grew from a conversation that their driver recruiter had with Dale Greer. They needed drivers to um, support their company. And they were actually providing training in an out-of-state location at one of their other office locations. Wallace State was able to provide equitable training, leverage Alabama Workforce Stabilization Program funds to support the cost of the training, and launch a customized CDL training program which has met their local workforce needs. We are grateful to them and for their generous donation of an automatic training truck and two trailers. This partnership has allowed us to train successfully over 30 new CDL drivers just this year to date and to help fulfill their employment needs. Please welcome Tracy Rushing, the Executive Director of Safety for RE Garrison, to share more about our partnership. Tracy. So to hear you say it, it sounds small, <laughs> but our, our partnership with Wallace is a huge player in our um, ability to continue to grow in a downturn freight market. Um, workforce training is essential in our in our market. Um, the federal government regulates us in a way that 
you know, every industry is, but just the basic operation of our vehicles is federally regulated. So we have to lean on education partners because we want to haul freight, not train drivers. So it's important for us. Um, completely messed up the beginning of my speech, but it is a pleasure to be here to celebrate the grand opening of this new Workforce Training Center. Um, it's beautiful. We were blown away when we pulled up. Um, I appreciate you inviting us to tell about our partnership. It is essential to us. And um, supporting this community is also key um, at Garrison. We've been here for 60 years. Our, our ownership and leadership is from Coleman, and we're really proud to support Wallace State. A good number of our non-driving partners are alumni of this institution as well. So um, we believe that the program and the programs like it across the state are vitally important. Uh, we believe that it is how we're going to develop Alabama's future workforce. We know that workforce training can launch learners into so many different directions, not just one industry or career, but learners get specialized skills needed to step into jobs that employers have open and ready for workers. Um, it's training that we can't provide at the employer level. At RA Garrison, those workers are our drivers and our diesel technicians, which we don't key into a lot, but our diesel technicians are also trained at Wallace State. We recognize that many workers seek jobs less vulnerable to future displacement. We're hearing that all across, um, whether we're hiring drivers or non-driving partners, is they want the security of knowing what if a pandemic, what if, what if the economy, am I secure? So we believe that workers from all walks of life seek possibility but are uncertain about the time and expense of preparing for a new career. So in the um, commercial driving industry, in the transportation industry, we are generally a second career. We're not generally a first career. So we have drivers who are retrained, who have already left their first career. Workforce training makes best-in-class training available to all learners and equips them with the skills that we and other local employers are seeking. An employer that requires a particular skill set and a credential prior to on-the-job training, supporting the workforce training program is key to our being able to capture these new workers before they are recruited outside our community. Um, we take a good bit of pride in interacting with the workforce training program from day one, introduction of the student, so that we can retain that student in the Coleman County area because they are heavily recruited in our industry. From the first day that they're listed as a CDL holder, every long haul carrier in the country has access to that database. And so it is. it becomes highly competitive. So when we have um, able to look back for the last several years, Garrison has been an industry partner of the CDL training program and we have been able to donate an automatic truck and two trailers, which gives us a special advantage because our driving students are trained on our equipment. So it lessens the time that we spend on on-the-job training significantly. A training program that we're excited to see the partnership and program grow. We know that with this new facility, there'll be many opportunities, not just for the CDL training program, but all programs that Wallace State provides. The benefits that RE Garrison realizes every day as a result of the CDL training program and the diesel technician training program ensure the stability of our workforce. It's really comforting to us to know that we are going to have a steady flow of qualified, skilled workers coming into us. It's just a matter of holding positions for them, which is the game changer because we recruit to a waiting list at Garrison. That is not the industry norm. That is a benefit of being a partner in Coleman County and having a workforce training program specialized to us. When we go out, we came back from Women in Trucking, we were able to take 17 members of our staff to the National Women in Trucking Convention last month, and not one other carrier had any idea of what a waiting list for a driving partner was. They said, how do you even do that? <laughs> David, we were telling them, like, we keep up with it on a legal pad. We're that sophisticated. We have a five-week wait for a tractor at Garrison. And it was just an anomaly in the industry that if you partner strategically from before they even have the credential to operate the vehicle, you can create a waiting list scenario, which is a buzz in the industry. And we have drivers calling going, what, what are you waiting for? <laughs> You're driving the same freight liners that we drive, what are you waiting for? And it's about being part of this community. When we're able to envelop a driver, a new driver, and generally their family into this community early because they're trained here, it creates a special synergy that doesn't go away. Those are long-term employees for us. Um, we've heard lots about the national driver shortage. It's made headlines many times in recent years. And because of our partnership for workforce training, we've been able to maintain a below national average turnover at Garrison, which takes better care of our people and our equipment. 
and to service our customers without fail due to strategic partnerships like this par partnership. Garrison's been awarded in the last 24 months a best-in-class freight hauler for many of our top customers, Tyson Foods, U.S. Foods, um, Milo's Tea, we're the premier hauler for Milo's Tea now. That's, a, that's directly attributed to the partnerships within this community. We keep America moving and our essential goods and goods available at affordable prices. They hinge on having a skilled driving force capable of delivering safely and on time. Workforce training programs like the CDL training program here at Wallace State is the best way to make this career opportunity available and to keep the trucks of not only Garrison but all of our local fleets seated and moving. There are many opportunities for transportation to be profitable in Coleman County. And so this program doesn't just provide drivers to Garrison. Um, we like to think they're all coming to us, but they don't. But um, it, it's a good way for us to share that with our industry partners in Coleman County and say, you don't have a waiting list for drivers, go talk to Suzanne over at Wally State and they'll build a program just for you. We work closely with the instructors and the program managers to ensure that our new drivers are equipped with the exact skills that we need to set them up for success and provide our customers with unmatched service. At Garrison, one of our five core values is community. It's a foundational principle of who we are and we know that having a strong workforce center and a program puts our community in advantage when we recruit new businesses to our area. We recognize this as another way that we can responsibly invest in Coleman's future and growth. We believe that leveraging our local workforce training program to support economic growth for our community will ensure that we have skilled workforce available to us for generations to come. Having this program local to our headquarters has created an opportunity for our new drivers to become part of the garrison community quicker. Building those relationships with their support teams many times even before they complete the program. Life as an over-the-road driver can be very disconnected. If the sense of community is not established with the carrier and its community early, and when the training program and the industry partner allow for that connection early, the driver will many times become a long-term partner and in some cases take on the role of a trainer. That's, that's gold when they're sharing the skills that they learned here and they're paying that forward. We're proud to partner with Wallace State's Workforce Training Program and we know that you are equipping our drivers to make a living make a life and make a community. So thanks for having Gary here today. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, the nonprofits in our area provide a wide range of services to support our community. Wallace State has long had, has long had partnerships with United Way, The Link, Hope Horses, among others. But the partnership that we've established with Royal Pines, a residential recovery and life restoration center for men, which is actually located in Hayden, really spans over a decade in time. We began providing workforce education to the residents at Royal Pines really almost 10 years ago. Jamie Blackman started providing Ready to Work there, which is now the Alabama Career Essentials program. And then it was followed by adult education, providing GED training to those who did not have a high school diploma. And I have to say, uh, when I, uh, I guess I kind of went and said, <clears throat> can I have adult education under my area? Uh, I fell in love with it. I fell in love. I didn't know that much about it. I knew it was a GED program, but it's so much more than that. Adult education is beyond just getting a GED. It's a gateway for people who lack the basic skills. They went to high school, they graduated, but they really weren't ready to be in the workforce. They weren't ready to be out in the world. And adult education truly provides that gateway. So it's been such a blessing to be um, a part of the adult education program. And I actually gifted it to um, our <laughs> current director, Patty Wilkins, uh, almost two years ago now. But I served as the interim director and it was the best thing I could have done was to really immerse myself in adult ed to learn what it was really all about. And as a part of that, I learned a lot about Royal Pines. So through our Royal Pines uh, partnership, we have been integrating skills for success. And this is in large part due to the next speaker we're going to bring and our gifted adult education instructor, April Metrock. The Skills for Success program is an, an innovation center initiative. And you'll see our um, prom promotional back items back there for Skills for Success. But what we've been focusing on with, with the Royal Pines group is our heavy equipment operator training. And since they, we have integrated that into their recovery program, we've trained uh, close to 45 different 
individuals have now received some skills certification so that when they complete recovery and they're out into the workforce, they have a marketable skill that they can go to work. So Jeremy, I'm going to ask you to come forward and share a little bit about the program. I just want to say um, thank you for uh, the honor of speaking here today and thank you for the honor and the privilege to be in partnership with you at Wallace State. Um, I'm going to give you some better numbers. I know you said about 40. Um, I can just say maybe about 65% of the personnel, the clients that are at Royal Pines in our facility have been educated through Wallace State. And I would dare to even say that a great deal of their recovery and their success in life's journey as they leave the facilities are due to the education and the information that is given and provided through this wonderful institution. So I say thank you. Um, as you know, uh, Jimmy Hill Mission has the pleasure of serving individuals who have may fall in, in life's journey. Um, we, although we can provide a Christ-centered clinical uh, structure of rehabilitation, there are other attributes that are needed for us to develop and be great in society. Through Wallace State and April Metrock, I don't see her, she's uh, been a wonder phenomenal words you cannot express what you have done for the clients at Royal Plans. Um, if I could just emulate the faces when they shed tears and say, hey, sir, I passed. I've, 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 I've got a skid steer certification. I'm OSHA 10 certified. Half of the things I don't even know what they are. <laughs> but the confidence so three things that they give, I would tell you they give Wallace State and the community the success, uh, skills for success resource has provided information, um, the know-how, the understanding, the hope of tomorrow and these gentlemen, uh, the knowledge, theoretical implementation. These guys can tell me how to break down a car. We have diesel mechanics that are graduated from Wallace and they're working at Lowe's successfully because of Wallace State and this skills for success. We have uh, computer techs and programmers that are constantly calling back. Thank you guys for the opportunity. And it's just not from what we give, it's the partnership because they're encouraging them daily that you can do more than that you, you think you have and resources are there. And so we may, in the times that we don't know or haven't afforded the time to go out and research, it's already there and it's provided nonstop through what April and the Wallace State Community College has provided. Um, I actually started to bring one with me this morning, a client, because he just wanted to tell you of the success. Um, but the most important thing I think that we provide is the confidence and the spirituality of man. Um, once they become confident, they're ready to take over the world and they develop and they become better citizens in society. Um, neighborhoods change, families change, generations change, because uh, what we think of just minute education or a small stepping stone becomes that catalyst that change a whole family dynamic. And when you change family dynamics and give the people the ability to uh, provide for their families, it does something to an individual, it does something to community, and it also does something to the world. So it's much bigger than you think. Um, I just thank you for that opportunity of what you guys are doing for these gentlemen. Look forward to you guys branching out, uh, coming to uh, Shapiro Men Center in the Jesse's Place downtown. Um, keep, keep going. Keep going. And um, I invite everybody to give. and be. If you are an alumni, support your uh, place that gave you your first step. Blessings. What a powerful testimony. And I, I'm just going to take a point of privilege for a minute. Um, years ago, uh, we had someone apply for a job internally who had, uh, had been a student, had gone through recovery, and I just didn't know about hiring that person because, you know, it, it is what it is when you have, um, you know, issues. And I, I had one of those moments where I had to deal with internally I had to wrestle internally with the community college mission, you know, because we're about training everybody and connecting them to
to a job where they can have a living wage to support their family. So I hired that person, ended up being one of our best employees. So there's a great workforce waiting in the Jimmy Hill mission, and so thank you for allowing us to be a part of that, connecting them to a, a living wage so they can support their family. I want to—I see our Rahal people there, and I want to ask the Rahal folks to stand up for a minute because I want to acknowledge our Rahal partners. We've been partners with Rahal for a long time, and and yes. You know, Rahal transformed this community, uh, you know, as a first supplier to Mercedes. This was the first R&D facility for Rahal in the United States. And that was a game changer here. But now Rahal has gone through all, so many, you know, you're going through a major expansion right now with a new paint line, which we did a grand opening of it a couple weeks ago, and it's phenomenal. But Rahal decided that they needed to pull their engineers back into their facility to have them closer to their manufacturing processes and so that's why this facility became available but it, it has laid the foundation for our community is that not right Dale? Yes, so thank you Rahal for entrusting us with this facility thank you so much thank you for being here today and then one more thing and I'm gonna call um, Suzanne back up to close Chancellor you, I, I can't tell you how many times in the last several years that you've been chancellor that we've had conversations about community colleges need to be involved in the economic development process. It started a program with the Alabama League of Municipalities, the chancellor's brainchild, and uh, but worked with rural communities to train economic developers uh, through the Alabama League of Municipalities, and we've had those trainings in our local communities. But let me tell you what, Dale Greer, Peggy Smith, we have always benefited here in our community of always being at the table. So anytime a prospect is, is initiated here, we're at the table to talk about what role we need to play. I can't tell you how many letters I've written over the years for, you know, company, what's, yeah, well, and, and incubating companies because, you know, when economic development, Dale Greer comes to, you know, picks up the phone and calls me, I say, how can we help? What is our role? And it transforms a community, but it's only because of the relationship that we have, Chancellor, with our economic development partners, because doing that enables us to be on the front side of planning what we've got to do to, to, to prepare a workforce-ready group of people in that talent pipeline. So thank you for that, Dale Greer and Woody Jacobs. Suzanne, I'm going to turn that back over to you now. Will you close us up? Thank you. So I'm super excited to open today. This has been since the Friday morning we got the call that we're coming to look at the building, which I had been in this building before. It was just a blank slate. There were several desks and offices were still here at that time to where we are today in a relatively short period of time is really nothing short of a lot of people's hard work and vision. And I will introduce my team and say thanks so much to them shortly. But in today's rapidly evolving world, the need for a skilled and adaptable workforce is crucial. And this center is designed to meet those needs by providing workforce education programs to provide individuals with the skills and the knowledge that are needed to be workforce ready. This training center reflects a collective commitment by those represented here today and those who are not here, who couldn't be with us here today, to support the workforce current and the future workforce for our community and beyond. So this Workforce Center is not just a facility, it represents pathways to success, personal growth, career mobility, technology training currency for our business and industry, skills attainment and pathways to certificates and degrees and industry recognized credentials. We often hear the term non-credit to describe programs that are skills based in nature. And I'll get everybody in the room who's ever heard me talk about this will go, here she goes, she's on her soapbox. Nobody wants to be non-anything. Non-credit doesn't mean that you're non-anything. It just means you're not getting an academic credit. So I wanted to change the page, flip it, turn it, make it something that somebody wants to be a part of. So what this sentence, this center represents is every skill, every credit counts. It's workforce credit, skills credit. It's so important. It's so important for our folks who participate in our trainings. 
Today, Wallace State is launching Pro Skills Pathways, which you see on walls around us. And these are workforce and skills credit pathways leading to a job, career mobility, and or academic credit towards a certificate or degree that can be acquired through prior learning and equivalency credit. Every credit, every skill counts. In an economy today where we see more job descriptions focused on skills and not specifically degrees, the skills credit takes on new meaning and new opportunities for our workforce. Each area represented here it has a corresponding um, pathway on our campus at the main campus with an academic program. You'll see healthcare, applied technologies, STEM, and liberal arts. Those are all represented here and they're mirrored in our academic pathways. Our current offerings here will be phlebotomy, uh, certified nursing assistant, medication assistant, and pharmacy tech, which will launch in the spring. In our applied technologies area, we will offer robotics training and other customized trainings. In the STEM area, we will offer the fiber optics labs from Skills for Success, which you see our partners from the Coleman Area uh, Technology Academy are here today. Many of them have just completed the skills class and the lab class under the direction of Justin Miller, who we partner with. Um, in the liberal arts area, we're going to offer graphic arts, leadership, and management programs. All of those will be workforce credit programs, skills programs that can be done in a short, ter short period of time. The Skills for Success Technology Lab, which is located um, to my right on your left, will provide a location for those who are new to online learning. Not everybody learns online, where there's still people who are not as technolo technology proficient as we probably all in the room are. And what that computer lab will allow us to do is have students to come here, they can register for the Skills for Success class, they can even come here and take the theory, the online theory part, with somebody here to guide them along the way. Skills labs in food and beverage, hotel accommodations, and nurse tech, which we have totally taken over from Skills for Success. I made Houston Blackwood promise me that we could take on the nurse tech um, as our next project. Um, will be held here in the coming months. The Workforce Training Center is a significant step forward in our commitment to empowering individuals and fostering economic growth within our community. As we celebrate this milestone with a great sense of pride and optimism, it's a symbol of our commitment to progress knowledge and community development. I hope that the impact of this center will resonate positively for many generations and the generations that are yet to come. I want to thank mostly our Wallace State team. And if I start naming names, I will forget somebody like Dr. Carlowick said, but I specifically want to say, thank the Center for Career and Workforce Development team who I'm going to ask you to stand. Stand, please. Okay, thank you. This team has worked tirelessly. I'm not sure, is it, where, I don't know where Sydney is, but Sydney Pear is our creative genius who brought me the logos and said, what about this, what about this, and I said, can you add this, can you add this, and these are all her creations. She does a phenomenal job. Uh, Christina Holmes is over our work-based learning and apprenticeships. Bethany Campbell will be our uh, strategic partnerships and employer engagement. Ashley Baker and Sean, Ryan and Anna Beard, I don't know where she is is that this, she may be outside. They're all going to be working on the workforce side of the house. I uh, we'll be, would be remiss if I didn't recognize my CDL team, especially since Tracy Rushing talked how great they are. Joseph, where are you and your group? Where did they go? Oh, there's Joseph. There they are. Uh, Dr. Krowitz has been very gracious to allow us to bring on five CDL instructors so that we can train upwards of 200 people in the coming year. We're very excited about that. And then, because our heavy equipment, I know uh, Neely and Paul are here. These are our heavy equipment lab instructors and they've been great as well. We greatly appreciate all of you. My rest of my advancement team, my my plus one is what I call him, my work husband, Brett, Brett Messersmith, <laughs> who I couldn't function without, is here and Carrie Woods is here and who am, am I missing anybody? So I want to thank you all. I couldn't say enough about the IT team for being here and also facilities. Billy Rose is not here, but they, I've worn them out. We have collectively worn them out since about the middle of July on events and openings and announcements, and it's a great place to be. So thanks to all of you very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I couldn't do it without you. Be seated. <clears throat> Thank you.
finally, I want to say a thank you to Chancellor Baker and to Dr. Karlowitz for your support and for allowing us to dream big in this new space. At this time, I'm going to ask our DS guests to join us. We're going to do a ribbon cutting out front. That way we don't have the sprout um, uh, trucks behind us in our picture. So we are going to do a ribbon cutting out front. We invite you to tour. The uh, FAME students are doing some mechatronics, robotics demonstrations. Our, we held our first phlebotomy class yesterday. Now that was exciting. Uh, Jessica had moved all of her equipment here and I didn't include. Jessica, did you stand a minute ago? She's my phlebotomy. She's going to be overseeing the healthcare area. The first student came in the door and her eyes were big and wide because they've just been in a classroom and they have been moved. I can't tell you how many times they've been moved from classroom to classroom. So they were so excited to be in this space and have a permanent landing space to have classes. So thank you to Jessica for taking care of all of those things. So we're looking forward to opening this center. We'll be open Monday through Friday. And if you don't see a training that you think your company or your business needs, just ask us. We will make it happen for you.